Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Stephanie Rock. I'm a policy associate in student services and K-12 alignment at SBCTC. Uh, this is our first um, uh, community technical college running start series uh, for the academic year specific for our CTCs. And um, I just wanted to welcome everybody. I know that, uh, like I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, there there are some extenuating weather circumstances that we all have um, dealt with in the last 24 hours. So I'm just really grateful for everybody joining us here today. Uh, we will be recording this session, the first hour, uh, or at least the update session of, of this um, series of the session. So I just wanted to give everybody a heads up and Kristen's gonna go ahead and, and looks like she already hit record there. So um, our, se our session today is gonna go from 9 a.m. till 11 a.m. Uh, we may end a little early depending just uh, based on um, conversations, breakout sessions, questions. Um, but I just wanted to thank everybody for being here this morning. We're going to go on to the next slide here for introductions. I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jamie Trogett. I'm Director of Student Services and K-12 Alignment at the State Board. Good morning, everybody. I'm Kristen Jowie, and I'm the program administrator of student services in K through 12 alignment at the state board. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Brandon Reed. I'm in the IT division here at the state board, uh, specifically in the customer support area for student financials. And I don't know, is Tim on the call yet? I don't think I saw him jump in, so I might introduce him for for us here. Uh, Tim McLean uh, with OSPI, Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, our dual credit program supervisor, will be joining us just for a couple uh, quick updates um, shortly here. So just wanted to make sure he um, got introduced before we get into our content here. All right. We're going to move into our agenda. So um, we have uh, what we'll do is we'll start with some updates. Uh, we'll have some OSPI dual credit updates. We'll go over to our SBCTC dual credit updates and general updates. And then we have a uh, fantastic Brandon Reed here who will give us some student financials updates for uh, for um, for our session today. We'll have an opportunity for Q&A, and then we will do some breakout sessions. Um, and Kristen is going to uh, drop in the chat um, what topics or questions you would like to explore during the breakout session. And I believe she'll be doing that shortly here. So if you would um, like to uh, recommend some topics, that would be really helpful. We do have some, some prompts um, that we can kind of help guide, but if you have any other uh, any suggestions, we would love to, to collect those and either um, have those as topics today or in future um, sessions. So um, she will be doing that. But the other thing I will say is because it looks like we only have about 34 people on the call today, we're going to kind of play it by ear to see if we will actually do the breakout sessions. So we'll kind of see where we go with the Q&A um, and kind of keep it organic for today. Um, but at the very least, if you have suggestions uh, or topics you You'd like to to discuss with folks um please drop that in the chat and um kristen just put that in there so reply to to kristen's um message there would be great for us to be able to track them um and what i was going to say too is we are going to uh if we do the breakout sessions which i think we might have enough folks good jumping on at this point our, our intent here was to try something different we were going to do breakout sessions based on the size of your running start population uh we had received that feedback during our last academic year during our series uh from several of you and we just thought that was such a great idea to um break out those sessions based on your populations so uh we'll see if we can make that work and uh bear with us because that's something that we are are going to be trying new. Um, and because we don't have as big of a, a group today, I'm not so sure that's going to pan out how we had planned. So um, stay tuned for when we get to the breakout sessions a little bit later today or that session of our, our, um, our call here. All right. And I did see Tim just jump on. Uh, Tim, are you ready for your OSPI dual credit updates? I am. Sorry for the delay. I was logging into the wrong meeting. <laughs> things no happen. worries. I waited and waited and was writing you an email before I realized I was on the wrong link. Oh, no. Well, thank you for being here, Tim. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on over to you for updates. 
Sure, happy to be here. Um, I'll give you all a heads up. I'll do my update. Um, I'll hang on the line for a few minutes and then I'll have to rejoin remotely um, to listen into the rest and, and field any questions that might come up. But um, there's not a tremendous amount of new information that we didn't cover back in October, but I suppose I have a few updates that I'll, I'll touch upon. Um, first and foremost, the Consolidated Equity and Sustainability Grant that was referenced uh, back then, you might be familiar with, it closed on November 1st. Um, I am about three quarters of the way through application review, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it will be awarding next week. We came in at 74 applications, which was a significant increase over last year and 2.9 million in requests. Um, so we're paring those down. And the reason that's relevant to you, um, it is a K-12 grant, but I am noticing a huge uptick in the creativity of these applications and the desire for uh, recipients to work with colleges. Um, specifically in developing CTE in college and the high school. Um, so uh, probably less relevant to running start, um, but certainly as many of you take on different uh, roles and mul wear multiple hats, uh, there's a lot of interest in expanding along CTE and college and the high school lines. And so hopefully we'll be able to communicate the recipients, maybe not dollar amounts, with a lot of precision, but let you know sort of who's coming into some funding and who may be wanting to work with colleges um, in the upcoming year uh, with that funding. Um, I also wanted to let you know if you came away from October 23rd and was just really excited about the content that you heard and said, wow, I wish my K-12 partners uh, were in the room and many of them were. Um, but if you're aware uh, that there's information out there in that session that K-12 needs to hear um, that may not have been in the room, we, as we mentioned, are offering asynchronous clock hours for that opportunity. And the uh, recording is now posted and PD Enroller now has a specific um, event connected to that um, session. And so you are certainly welcome. I think we put it out over the listserv. If not, we will do that really shortly, but you are welcome to pass that information along to your K-12 partners. Um, in addition to the bulletin itself, which I'll touch on in a second and say, hey, there's some really valuable information here. Um, and there are clock hours, which are always uh, something that our, our folks will be itching for. Um, and that's now available. And I think I saw Stephanie or somebody drop the link in the chat. Um, quick update on the Running Start Ledge report. I'm I'm getting embarrassed that I've been touting this for so long, and I'm so excited about it, and it hasn't dropped yet. Um, we are doing some final tweaking of of the many graphics that we have in the report, and trying to um, simplify the dashboard that will accompany it. So that should be coming soon. I may be saying that next month. Who knows? Um, but it is it is out there. The report itself is complete, and we're just waiting to um, do some ADAing um, to make sure that all the graphics are compliant and so forth. Um, so that is coming. Um, I have established my own dual credit uh, monthly office hours. Several of you have already dropped in on me, and I've really appreciated the support of the, that effort. Um, I, it's the same Zoom link each month. Um, but the next one is coming up December 5th. I haven't scheduled out into the spring yet, but I will be doing that soon. So you are certainly welcome to just drop in. And some of you have taken advantage of that. My numbers have steadily grown with each one. So I'm going to keep promoting it because it seems to be working. And there's no formality to it. It's just an opportunity for drop-in questions and networking with colleagues. If there's nettlesome things that you want to try to um, share your thoughts on, or you want to come in, ask me a direct question, don't want to put it in email for whatever reason, those office hours are there for you and also for the K-12 folks. So sometimes it's just good to compare notes and share perspectives on things with anybody that happens to hop in the room. Uh, the RSEVF feedback survey is coming soon. 
Becky McLean has been on um, vacation. Others have been in travel status for a while. So that is lagging and I am sincerely sorry for that. I hope to have that out almost immediately after the webinar. Um, it just needs some internal vetting and we need to get it into Alchemer um, to make it into a survey tool. So um, we still have some fine tuning to do on that, but we do intend to have that out relatively soon. I can't believe November is nearing a close. I keep saying, okay, we're only a couple of weeks late. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's coming. And then finally, as we discussed in October, Bulletin 06724 is available now. It covers the same content that we um, covered on the 23rd. However, um, it's there in black and white. So it, again, is something that we encourage you to share broadly to your K-12 partners. It's gone out in a multitude of different ways. We've provided PD on it, um, and it is posted on our website uh, in a call-out box, really easy to access. Each topic that's covered has its own little one page. Um, so it, as you know, if you've looked at it already, it answers a lot of co common questions that have always been for the most part in the FAQs, but we're doing some work to really highlight that. And really specifically, it covers 1146 in the notification requirements. Um, that template is also very close to the finish line. It, in my opinion, it is done. It's just going through our internal review process. And so that template, again, more relevant to the K-12 side, uh, but I think you'll be happy to see um, the transparency with which uh, dual credit information should be going out um, in the years to come. Uh, it also covers running start access, college and the high school, and the test fee subsidies. Um, I added a slide last minute, Stephanie. I'm not even sure you saw it. Um, but my last order of business was just to highlight that the School Links High School and Beyond Plan demonstrations um, are now of, are live. They're coming um, on the dates there on your screen. One has already, two have already passed. I didn't realize that when I snuck that in there. At the last second, there is one going on now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we copied and pasted so quickly that I didn't even scan this. So you've got one more opportunity um, on November 26th to um, check this out. Uh, all of the sessions are the same. I have no doubt they're being recorded. I suspect that a recording will be posted if you can't make that last one on the 26th. Um, but this is a, another opportunity just to get familiar with what's getting rolled out um, and what the possibilities are at the K-12 level for the high school and beyond plan moving forward. Wonderful. Thank you, Tim. And I was just going to mention, too, just to piggyback off what Tim said, uh, we will send out um, the recording for the session. Uh, with hopefully by the end of the week, maybe early next week. And in that, I will also in the listserv uh, include that PD enroller information from the dual credit webinar, just so folks kind of have that at the top of their, their email box. If you want to share that out with your K-12 partners um, for them to encourage them to, to watch. Um, so I just wanted to, to make mention of that. Thank you, Tim. That was a very long link, but there it is in the chat. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and turn on over to Jamie. Thank you so much, Tim. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you all. I wanted to just give a few updates. I know uh, in, I, I believe one of our last sessions, we we provided some updates on staffing at the agency, but I just want to reiterate that so everyone kind of knows where our focus areas are. So we did have a reorg in the agency. Um, and so now we have combined dual credit K-12 alignment with student services. So I am overseeing both of those. Stephanie is now your go-to for everything dual credit policy associate. She has been your go-to. Um, so please make sure you're reaching out to her, but I'm always happy to assist as needed, but she she's your policy associate for this work. And then Kristen Jowey is our program administrator. Her main focus is on bridge to college um, program. However, because all of that fits in with K-12 alignment work, she's also here um, to support us and really start bridging some of those, those pieces when we think of dual credit, K-12 alignment, bridge to college, everything. So happy to have Kristen here as well. Um, we, uh, you may know we've had some agency changes 
Um, our executive director is no longer with us and we will be doing a national search for that position. But just so you know, um, we have um, an interim director, a retired president from Chris Bailey from Lower Columbia College will be joining us December 2nd. And he'll be with us through probably June or July as we move forward with the new um, filling that position permanently. So that's more of an FYI, it doesn't really change anything for you all, but if you have heard things or seen things, I just wanna make sure that you hear it from us. Uh, let's see, I don't have a ton with legislative updates, but more just that it's coming. <laughs> legislative 2025 is uh, coming up in January. Uh, it's, it's our biennium, it's the big one, um, but I will say that you may have heard that the governor's office is asking um, cabinet level agencies to consider um, budget reductions. The outlook isn't necessarily um, uh, favorable financially for this one. So we anticipate, you know, um, maybe many things may not, um, a lot of bills will come, but whether or not they're funded is a different story. So um, we have worked closely with OSPI on some possible legislation. And when anything is final, we, we will share that. And I'm also working on some legislation around college and the high school. Uh, last legislative session, I held, I believe, monthly updates. We already have these scheduled for running start. We may consider, and I'm just thinking this on the fly, um, inviting college and the high school um, staff to attend this so Stephanie can provide you um, updates because things go quickly. So we'll we'll decide if one once a month is enough or we need to open that up more because we want to make sure you're informed. Also an opportunity for you if there's testimony options, bill analysis, feedback for us. We want to make sure that we're including you um, to provide feedback as needed so we can make sure we're accurately um, advocating for you all um, at the Capitol. So uh, I will leave that at that and we'll have a Q&A in a bit. So happy I'll stay on to answer any questions regarding those two updates. Um, but I will let Stephanie share um, the rest of them. Thank you so much, Jamie. Yes, um, so I just wanted to, to give a little plug about the NASEP National Conference that happens every year. And I know several of you in the room today uh, attended the NASEP National Conference end of October that was in Orlando, Florida. So um, I just, if you have not attended, uh, and, and NASEP stands for the National Alliance of Concurrent Enrollment Partnerships. And so um, I just wanted to give a plug. If, if you have not attended, uh, it is a wonderful national conference that many Many of our, our folks in Washington state attend. Uh, so it's just great to connect with colleagues. It's great to, on a national level, just to understand what's going on in terms of dual enrollment, dual credit, concurrent enrollment uh, nationwide. And um, the link here here uh, that Kristen just dropped into the chat is already plugging uh, the 2025 event, which will happen end of October 2025 in Los Angeles, California. So this is just more of us just giving a, hey, save the date. This is a great um, professional development learning opportunity as you're kind of thinking about budgets for, for going into next year. Um, so I just wanted to put that early on everyone's um, um, mindset there. Um, it is on the West Coast and um, is a really wonderful opportunity as several of you already know. Um, so just wanted to, to mention the NASEP conference. Um, and then the other piece I wanted to mention was, um, as many of you know, we are working on uh, math placement specifically. Um, I work with uh, several folks at the state board uh, on this initiative. We have a grant, um, and I've mentioned this a couple times in different series in the past uh, academic year. Um, we have had a couple different convenings all around our math placement um, project grant that uh, was awarded by College Park Washington. And so uh, we recently at Everett Community College, Thank you, Everett Community College, uh, had a math placement summit, uh, November 7th and 8th, and it was a wonderful two-day event. And we actually had a vice chancellor uh, from the California Community College System come up, Dr. John J. Hetz, and present on um, what California has learned and, and where they're at in terms of math placement. And it was just, I think I can speak on behalf of everyone, a really great event. We had representation from 23 of our community and technical colleges there. 
And um, I just wanted to mention that because I think it's really important. Um, obviously, placement's a big part of our Running Start population. And so um, I just wanted to make everybody aware, if you are not already aware, that we are we have a we have six pilot colleges as part of the grant, um, separate from the summit, part of the summit, but separate. Um, where we have in the past year and a half implemented, put together a high school transcript placement grid is what we call it. And the link there, that math placement project information has the grid in there if anybody is interested and wants to take a look. But it's based, basically what it is, is it's a document that our pilot colleges are using to place uh, students with their high school transcripts um, into college level um, at our colleges. And the intent here is to really um, be equitable uh, across the board so that a student with high school transcripts is placed the same, um, regardless of what community technical college they attend in our system or would like to attend. And right now that isn't necessarily the case. Students are placed all over the place based on what college. And so we're trying to really align and make things a little bit more systemic and equitable for the student experience. Um, so there's that portion of what we're doing with math placement. The other portion is we are in a very, um, an initial first steps of at the state board uh, working on a directed self-placement, guided self-placement tool, the cre creation of um, that hopefully the idea here would be to put that out for colleges to join um, and, and put this out widespread. So kind of similar. So we would really have two placement measures, um, which would be the high school transcript grid. Uh, and then we would also separate project, the DSP, GSP, which we are just starting to work on. We even haven't even had our like initial conversation on that yet, but we, we just recognize that um, assessment based placement isn't necessarily the most equitable placement practice and we're really trying to move away from that and be more equitable for students. So I just wanted to put that um, on everybody's awareness that those those things are going on um, from a state board's perspective and then call, pilot colleges are um, six pilot colleges are on board with the grid and now we're just starting separately um, DSP conversations and this is math related first and foremost we do hope to roll this out for English as well. So just thought this would be a really important space to, to mention those things. Um, and with that being said, uh, you can kind of see there, we say we need your help on the slide. Uh, we are trying to really, we did this a few years ago from my understanding as we put out um, basically a, a survey or we collected what Running Start programs are doing in terms of placement um, system-wide. And we realized that that information is outdated at this point. And so this is more of a plug of, and thank you, Kristen, for putting that in the chat. Um, please fill this out for your college so that we get a, a realistic view of, of real time of, of what these, these placement practices are looking for for your students and on your campus for Running Start specifically. Um, that will that will give, that, that'll be very helpful and useful information for us um, as we move forward with our placement projects um, from a state standpoint. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, you know, I think this space, this monthly space that we have for you all, um, it, it, one of the intents here is collaboration and coming together and, and learning from one another. So just wanted to, we do have a, a Google Drive that if you would like to drop at any point, any Running Start best practices that you have, um, any tools that you all have developed, any guides that you think would be useful to share out, um, where our hope is that this can be a space that that can um, folks can, can look at like, oh, I wonder what this college is doing. Um, just if you have anything that you would like to share with others, if you could drop it in the, the Running Start Best Practices Google Drive, um, and that should be, um, everybody should be able to access that and take a look at that. So just another space for learning from one another outside of, of this monthly session here. Um, just wanted to, to put a plug on for that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on over to Brandon Reed. Thank you, Brandon, so much for being here, our Associate Director of Campus Solutions Student Financials. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, just a few uh, quick updates out of CTC link. Um, if you if you hadn't heard, there is a, a new field available in uh, on the process running start uh, page within CTC link. And uh, previously, we only 
listed out 11th, 12th, and 13th uh, as as far as grades available for selection. And this past uh, um, August or so, we just uh, chatted with everyone and, and from this meeting uh, had the uh, wherewithal to establish uh, the 10th uh, grade. And so that is added. It is in production uh, environments. It is also in the, your test PCD environment. So please realize that is available uh, to use right away. And um, and again, just if, if you don't remember the navigation, it is in the student financials link under uh, tuition calculation. And then there's a custom uh, menu item, and then you'll see the process running start page. So I'm sure you are all very familiar with uh, utilizing this page. And also, we have an update with regards to uh, the new P223 running start invoicing query. Uh, that was a, a, also a um, an item that started uh, through conversation out of this monthly meeting. And so I was really pleased to uh, uh, help and in, in, in create and develop this global item for everyone to, to utilize. And so re please take advantage of the, the Running Start Google Drive that Stephanie mentioned and, you know, keep the ideas coming for any uh, any ideas, whether it's, it's global or local. Um, with regards to global versus local uh, verbiage and that terminology, um, please just remember, for global reports, our, our state reporting team, um, and specifically Emily Mullins, was amazing to work with, extremely bright and uh, efficient to, to put and build out this, uh, this report. And so that's going to be something that you can work with uh, Stephanie to uh, set up a, a ticket, or we can have conversations in order to make sure all the details are there and include you with some of the testing if necessary. And then when it comes to local reports, uh, those are going to be more uh, reports or queries that you as an institution may specifically want or utilize in order to get through your, your daily business processes. And so the, the state board is available to assist. However, for actually uh, building out those reports, we would request that those first originate from your institution's kind of reporting teams and query developers, and then um, they kind of begin the, the process with you locally for those reports. And if they uh, come into any issues or any problems that your query development team can reach out to our reporting team and, and get a ticket established to, to get over any humps or any issues that they are finding. And so uh, please just remember about those, the two big differences. If it is just, uh, uh, if it's an, an idea that everybody is gonna uh, uh, benefit from, we can uh, be sure to, to track that. And uh, Stephanie will uh, work with my team or the query team or the core team or the various teams here at the state board in order to, to get that across the finish line, uh, just like she did with the P223 report and with the 10th grade edition. So um, uh, yeah, that's what we have for you today from the CTC link.